Understanding how the CLR manages memory in .NET applications is vital to being a good c -sharp dev. So let's dig in. The best place to start is with the two main memory structures, the stack and the heap. The stack is an area of memory that operates on the last in first out approach. Access to the stack is generally pretty fast and as such value type variables are stored here. Meaning if you were to inspect the value of a value type variable as it's created, you would see its actual value as a place in memory on the stack i.e. if you create an int my number equal 1, you would see a signed 32-bit value on the stack with the value of 1. So that's value types in memory, but what about reference types? Those are stored on the stack as a reference or pointer to another place in memory, somewhere on the heap. This reference size will match your architecture, meaning if you have a 64-bit operating system, this reference will be 64 bits long. When an object is created in the code but not yet initialized, the reference on the stack is not yet set. It will just have random bytes for whatever was there in memory before. If you set an object to null, the reference on the stack becomes all zeros. Otherwise, it's pointing to the address on the heap that's storing its object's data. Values and pointers on the stack are kept in its LIFO sequence. As you execute through a method, values and pointers used in it are pushed onto the stack. Then once the method is complete and the system knows it can get rid of any variables local to the method, the CLR will pop everything related to the method off the stack, freeing up that memory. So that's the stack, let's talk about the heap. The heap is a much larger area of memory where the data for reference types are stored, also just known as instances of classes. This means that any value inside of your object, you know, properties, fields, etc., will have their own little areas inside of the larger object that's out there in the heap. And the pointer from the stack is pointing to a starting location from the section of memory that represents our object. In the case where an object owns its own local variables that are reference types, so for instance, your class employee has a string name, those values on the heap for that variable will be a reference to another place on the heap containing the string. The CLR garbage collector will periodically scan the heap for objects that are no longer being pointed at by the process. So for instance, if you change a string, the original object that represented that string is no longer used because strings are immutable. A new string is created and the old string is then garbage collected to deallocate its memory, freeing it up for other processes. The garbage collector will also attempt to keep the memory still being used together by memory copying objects that are far away down into a more compact area. The reason for this is to better utilize CPU cache. This is a computationally expensive process on large objects, so as such, the GC actually places large objects on their own large object heap. It defines a large object by any object greater than 85,000 bytes in size, according to the current docs. The large object heap is still garbage collected, but it happens less often and is not compacted like smaller objects are. That has been a quick introduction to memory management in .NET. If you feel like you leveled up in this video, please leave a like and subscribe, and let's get on to the next one.